Good morning and praise the Lord, brothers and sisters of PCA Nairobi West Parish. This is one of the Sundays that we will not congregate together and sing and shout and do things we have normally done in the church. And you know what is happening in the nation. But uh, the communication department of our church has kept us connected and will deliver the message through the YouTube, both audio and the video. It will be good that you listen and we share together. The message of today will be brought by Reverend Lucy Wamboi and she will share with us the things that the Lord has in store for us. In the meantime, I want to encourage you to have hope in the Lord and to stick only to what the Lord has promised. Other foundations will be shaken, but the Lord's one will not be shaken. We are guided by the words in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses, particularly verses 11 to 15, but more so verses 13 and 14, which I read to you. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. This is the promise of the Lord. It is valid to us as it was valid that time. Keep your hope alive and do your part for the Lord has promised his part and his promises are assured all the days of our lives. Remember also Psalm 91 verses 1. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Seek to dwell in that secret place and the Lord will never disappoint you. At a time like this one, when all things seem not to be working the way we have always wanted, remember also Proverbs 18 verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower or a fortified tower. The righteous land to it and are safe. Be safe by having yourself hidden in the name of the Lord, in the shelter of the Most High. But seek the Lord. He will respond. He will answer you. It's time to seek Him. It's not time to cry. It's time to seek Him and hear Him as he directs us. He has done his part, let's do our part and we'll be blessed together. God be with you now and always. Amen. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a great privilege and honor to share the message with all of us today. My gratitude to the parish minister the Reverend Festus Gitonga and the elders for allowing me to share their pulpit uh, today. I am Lucy Wamboi Wawero, and I'm a witness to the saving power that is in the blood of Jesus. I come to you from the Christian Education Department of PCA, where I currently serve. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for, for such an opportunity to hear your word. Your word is alive, your word is powerful, your word is creative, your word is able to do more than we can imagine or even think. Your word is sharper than any double-edged sword. And even at this time, when we know what is happening around us, dear Lord, we know your word carries the encouragement that we need. Your word will give us the strength and the courage to move on. So we thank you for an opportunity to hear you speak to us through your word. And so I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts may be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer in Jesus' name. So brothers and sisters, our readings today are taken from the book of Mark 4, verse 35 to 41. And the second reading comes from Philippians 4, verse 4 to 9. And the title of the message today, and perhaps you've heard this phrase before, is no God, no peace. Actually, the full version of it goes like, no God, no peace. But I want to use this second part of it, that is no God, no peace. And clearly, when we know God, we will know peace. 
only when we truly know God shall we be able to know peace. We thank God for this new day and indeed for his mercies and faithfulness that are new every morning. In this new dawn, we are slowly adapting to the new normal. It is not business as usual, as the world and closer home, our country, deals with the coronavirus pandemic. And under these new realities, God is still calling us to live and lead for his glory. So nothing stops in terms of our purpose and in terms of our calling. God is still expecting us to continue living for him and leading others as we lead ourselves for his glory. And under this new and somehow uncertain circumstances, we are still called to celebrate God's faithfulness as well as future promises, which are sure because the Lord's promises are yes and amen. And that doesn't change uh, with the circumstances of the day. God's faithfulness is experienced at all times, even in the toughest of circumstances like the coronavirus threat that we are going through right now. Even now, God's faithfulness remains steadfast. It is on that strength we can still look back with gratitude to where we've come from while pushing forward with hope and confidence. God has been at work. God is at work now and shall continue working in our lives. God is faithful and shall continue to be. Let all God's children be encouraged in the Lord because God is faithful even now. Today, we reflect on this sermon in the Lenten season. This is the 40 days that comes before the passion of Christ. So we are in the Lent season. And we join many other Christians who have congregated, and I put it in quotes, congregated in this new way. Thanks for the technological advancements that we have, which also is a blessing from God. This makes the Lent season 2020 very special. But amidst everything, let us not lose our focus and purpose. One thing that we need to keep in mind is that the distinguishing mark of the Christian faith still remains the cross of Jesus Christ not physical church buildings or even our denominations. Our main distinguishing mark of our faith, Christian faith, still remains the cross of Jesus Christ. Being a Christian means following Jesus even when it is uncomfortable and inconvenient as it may be now. There is a cost of discipleship that comes with following the way of the cross. Brothers and sisters, we are called to a costly journey of sacrifice, where we must really think outside of ourselves. And what a better time to think of sacrifice than this one, when there is going to be uncertain times, hard economic times and such. God is calling us again into this costly journey of sacrifice, giving outside ourselves and thinking of other people. It is a time that we are called into a costly journey of servanthood. Even the Son of Man did not come to be served. He came to serve. And so in this land season, God is calling us to serve more so even during this time where we are in this together, in this journey together, Kenyans together, Africa together, and the whole world together. God is calling us to serve our brothers and our sisters, to serve, not to wait to be served, but to look for opportunity to serve others. Again, the costly journey calls us to humility. Humility means accepting and taking our God-given position and walking in it. Not thinking too highly of ourselves. 
Philippians 2, 1 to 11 sets a good example of our Lord Jesus Christ where he did not count it such a privilege, you know, to come from um, the heavenly splendor, to leave everything behind, but Jesus humbled himself, accepted to be hated. People looked down on him, even unto death on the cross. He served in humility. He carried his cross. He paid the cost of discipleship. And God is calling us to walk in humility. To come out of our high places to where God is. To join God. To join the mission of God. The mission day. The costly journey also calls us to gracious love. And just recently, we were reminded through the theme of the Christian education about hospitality and about showing unusual kindness. So in this gracious love, it means we pay the cost. We consider other people more important than ourselves, just like we are reminded in 1 Corinthians and 13 about love and what it entails. Considering others to be more important than ourselves, sacrificing, not being selfish, not being self-driven, self-centered, but thinking about others, thinking about their comfort, thinking about their well-being. So let this Lent season remind us that following Jesus comes with a cost that we gladly and joyfully accept in gratitude, even amidst the challenges that are surrounding us. With this knowledge, we can boldly proclaim that it is well because we know God who is ever faithful and who is calling us to follow him even now. It is this kind of knowledge that leads us into experiencing inexpressible peace even amidst storms. Hence our summon title, No God, No Peace. In our first reading, which is taken from Mark 4, verse 35 to 41, we meet Jesus and the apostles, the disciples, going over to the other side to continue with their mission. And if you read through the book of Mark, there is a kind of an urgency. There is always a going over, a quickly, let's go, let's do, because the mission of God is urgent. And even now, it cannot stop. It's still urgent. And just like we all do in our schedule, in our life's journeys, where there are many crossing over us to many other sides, the disciples needed rest. Indeed, they needed rest in order to be strong enough to face the mission and to face the challenges uh, ahead of them, the challenges of the mission that they were going for. What they needed most was rest. But instead of rest, what they encountered was a terrible storm that shook them to the core. Until this time, the disciples seemed to have underestimated the power of Jesus, the power that Jesus had. And they were terrified and amazed when he spoke to the storm and it obeyed him. In life, in general, and more so at a time like this, and we are not exempted as Christians, we encounter more stormy weather than calm seas. And that is a daily reality. It is a reality of life. And because storms of life, the challenges that we face daily are inevitable, we need a lot of resilience. We need strength. We need courage. And we need to give people the same measure so that we can face the storms courageously and that we can also embrace those who are going through difficult times. We thank God because even having faced this stormy weather, Jesus was present. The disciples knew Jesus was with them. That's why they woke him up. Master, they woke him up. And Jesus spoke to the storms, and the storms were calm. 
Brothers and sisters, be encouraged in the Lord because the same Jesus is still at work. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever he shall be. Even tomorrow is in his hands. He can speak to the storms. There's a singer who said, I know the master of the storm. I know the maker of the rain. He can calm the storm, make the sun shine again. The only question that I have, do you know him so that you can have peace, so that you can have confidence, so that you can rest knowing that he will take care of every circumstance. He will take care of every challenge, of every storm. Do you know him? Because only then will you know peace. Our second reading is taken from Philippians chapter 4, from verse 4 to 9. Philippians is one of Paul's prison epistles. It was firstly written to thank the Philippian Christians for the gift they had sent to him to help him in his time of need. Yes, Paul, an apostle with amazing powers, with, amazing, um, with an amazing miracle, still had his storms. He still had his share of storms and needed Christians to encourage him. And we thank God for the Philippian Christians who were ready to send him help in prison. And that's where we find him uh, taking the opportunity to write back to say thank you, but also to reassure the Christians so that they too would be encouraged to move on, to, en to move on and face uh, their situations. So he wrote to reassure them that God was still with them, and he wrote to ask them to have courage and confidence in order to face their individual uh, troubles as well as uh, corporate uh, troubles as a church that was actually a minority then and a church that grew under difficult circumstances. And let me pause there and say that we must also use every God-given opportunity. And even this time is an opportunity for us to exercise our uh, Christ-likeness, for us to exercise our love, for us to show the world that actually there is an alternative, that we can still know peace because we know God. So Paul uses every available opportunity, even when he's behind the bars, when he's under chains, he doesn't let opportunity pass him. We might feel like we are under siege, like we are, we're almost locking down, but this is also an opportunity to lift up the banner of Jesus Christ and to show the world that we know who can calm every storm because he's going to do that. He's going to do exactly that. So we see in this letter, Paul breathing, so to speak, joy and confidence that can only be explained by Paul's deep faith in Jesus Christ. It makes all the difference. Knowing God through Jesus Christ, it makes a big difference. Because only then can you be joyous. And we know joy is one of the parts of the fruit of the Spirit. It's a fruit, not fruit of the spirit. And joy is one of them. Joy is not happiness, just happiness. Joy is not just empty smileys. Joy comes from a deep connection, a deep relationship with the Lord. Joy is not circumstance, circumstantial. Joy can be present even amidst the storms because it is a knowing, a knowing, a knowledge that is beyond the prevailing circumstances. So we see Paul in trouble, but he doesn't show that. We don't even find that tone in the letter. He's in prison, doesn't know what the future holds, and yet he's joyous. Indeed, he tells the people, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice would have expected him to just send prayers and have an expression like, Whoa, she, look at me, miserable, and the way I've been faithful, the way I've served the Lord. 
And that's why even this time we must know that, yes, even the righteous suffer. And theologians the world over struggle with that thing of the question of why do the righteous suffer? Why does God allow all this? Why? Where does it come from exactly? While some come from our uh, human negligence, some comes from evil, there is a part of suffering that we cannot explain. We cannot say why people are actually suffering even when they are, they are innocent. But what we know is that we know the one who calms the storms as they come. And therefore, we can have joy. We can still have joy. We can still have confidence in him and know that we can actually face tomorrow because he liveth. We may not have walked this way before. We may not have traveled this road before. But one thing we know is that the one whom we have believed, the one in whom we have laid our hands is faithful. Having walked through this way, being the creator of everything, having seen our end from our beginning, he is able to take us through. So again, I want to ask you a question. Where is your faith anchored at this time? And that is why in the epistle, as I come to the close, you find Paul encouraging the Philippians. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such thing. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So I want to, to pause and I want to ask us a question. What is the source of our information right now? Whose report are we going to believe even now when even the, the mightiest of the nations are grappling with this challenge? And many other challenges that we are going through individually. Of course, we're not oblivious to the fact that we also have our personal challenges. We have our daily struggles. Some people are still struggling with the sicknesses and diseases, some terminal illnesses. We're struggling with lacks of many kinds. We, there are many challenges even, even uh, beyond the corona. We, we still have our very many challenges. But I want to ask you, what is the source of information? Whose report are you going to continue believing? And I want to challenge us to again think of Paul's words and admonition in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Verse number 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. God is still at work. God is up to something, for in all things, God works out good for those who believe in him. So even in all these circumstances, bad as they may be, painful as they may be, uncomfortable as they may be, trust me, trust the Lord. He will work out some good. So what is the source of information? What are you feeding yourself on? Because if you get conformed to the standards of this world, if your knowledge is not God, if it is not God that you know, you will not have peace. So if you conform to the standards of the world, then you'll be discouraged. It will speak doom. You will not see a bright tomorrow. You will give up. But when you walk with the Lord, when you allow God to renew your mind, to renew you through his word, through the encouragement that you receive from brethren, through listening carefully to what God is saying in every situation. When you do that, you will know what the will of God is exactly 
because God's will is to prosper us. God's will is to bless us. You will know that will and you will know peace. So in this Lenten season, God is calling us still to remember that there is a cost of discipleship that we carry the cross. And as we do so, we seek the knowledge that comes from God. Because what we know affects our attitudes and our attitudes in turn affects our actions. So we don't want to panic because panic again, when you put it on reverse, you will see what our attitudes are. Then that tells us what we know. So when we know God, we shall know peace. We know the master of the sea. We know the maker of the rain. We know he can calm the storm and coronavirus and all the other challenges are not bigger than our God. So know God, my brother, my sister, even during this time. Seek God. Seek godly knowledge. Seek counsel. And even the information that we are receiving on a daily basis, seek it from uh, the, the authentic uh, sources as we follow Jesus Christ as we follow him through this Lent season, and we shall know peace. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for an opportunity to hear your word. And just as you spoke peace in the seas, just as you spoke peace in the storms, and yourself and the disciples were able to cross over, how we long and how we look forward to our crossing over to this other side, our crossing over beyond the threat that we are going through, our crossing over to better economic times, our crossing over to our normal freedom, our, our crossing over to, to a virus-free society, a crossing over, Lord. We, we long and we look forward to that time. And we know that our Redeemer liveth and that our tomorrow is secure, our tomorrow is safe, our tomorrow will come because we know you and we have placed our, our cares and our lives unto your hands. So, Master, speak peace even now. Speak peace in our hearts. Speak peace in our minds. Speak peace in our estates. Speak peace to the children. Speak peace to the adults. Speak peace to the vulnerable, the aged people. And people whose even immune systems are compromised by many other things. We speak peace, dear Lord. Speak peace in this nation. Speak peace in Africa. Speak peace in the world, especially in China and Italy, where people are suffering most at this time. Speak peace, Master, into this storm. And the storm will obey you. And may you help us. To know you. May you help us to seek you day and night. For when we know you, we will know peace. And peace is not absence of conflict or diseases. We know peace is tranquility. Peace is that serenity. Peace is that confidence that we have even amid challenges, amid storms. Peace is the shalom of God, that blessedness that all is well. That we can even bear fruit, even out of peace. So help us, Lord, to pursue that. To pursue that and to share the same with our friends and our neighbors. We pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son 